In this video, we're going to learn about default arguments in C++. So default arguments are also known as default parameters. And the idea is that we're going to supply default values for the parameters of a function. Let's go over an example. We'll make a function for adding together numbers. We'll say int add, int a, int b, int c. So the function is going to return an integer, and it's going to accept three integers as arguments. And we'll just return a plus b plus c. Then we can call the add function down here. So we'll say c out add one, two, three, followed by an end line. And if we add together one, two, and three, we should get six. And we do. Now what we can do is supply a default argument value. So in the case of this parameter here, c, we could say c is equal to zero. Now what's going to happen is we can actually call the add function without supplying an argument for the parameter c. So we could say c out add and then we'll have two and three followed by an end line. And if we save this and run it, we're going to get five here as that second output. And what's gone on is that we've called the add function and the parameter a has been set to the value two. The parameter B has been set to the value three. And we would say that two and three are the arguments. The parameter C has no argument value supplied, but what's going to happen is the default value is going to be used and C is going to be set to zero. So we get two plus three plus zero is five. We could change this to something else. We could say five here. And if we save this and run it now, we get two plus three plus five is equal to 10. But in the case of this add function, that wouldn't make any sense. We would want to make it zero. So that way, if we call the function with two arguments, the actual return value is going to be correct. Now we can actually have multiple default arguments. We could say here, B is equal to zero. Then we could call the function with a single argument. So here we'll say C out add, and we'll say eight, followed by an end line. And if we save run this, we'll just get back eight as a return value because all we basically do is return eight plus zero plus zero, which is gonna give us eight. So our default arguments, however many there are, have to come at the end of our parameters here. So we couldn't do this. We couldn't have a default argument in the middle of our parameters here. If we try this, we will get an error if we try to compile it. It says here, missing default argument on parameter C. So any default arguments we've got, however many there are, they have to come at the tail of our parameters here. So we'll put back C is equal to zero here. Now we can also have all of our parameters have a default argument value. So we could also say for A here that A is gonna be equal to zero by default. And again, we could call the add function, this time with no arguments at all. So we'll just say add followed by an end line. And in this case, we're just going to get back zero. So we save this, run it, and we just get back zero. Now, one thing with default arguments is if we have a prototype and a separate function definition, we only have to define the default arguments in the prototype. So for example, let's copy this and we'll make this just a prototype here. Then we'll provide the definition of the function down here. We don't have to repeat these default argument definitions down here. In fact, if we save this and try to compile it, the compiler will complain. It'll say redefinition of default argument. And we do need to define them in the prototype here because this prototype is telling our main function and the rest of our program how this function can be called. And so if these aren't here, these function calls here, that aren't using all of the arguments and are relying on the default argument values, they're not gonna work. So if we try that, if we try to take these out, we're gonna find we get an error related to that as well. So we'll save this, run it, and we get no matching function call for these cases that rely on default arguments. So we'll put those back. So we only define them once in the prototype. We're not going to define them here either. 
But if we do it this way, save it and run it, it's going to be fine. Now, one other thing we've got to watch out for when using default arguments is they could lead to an ambiguity in terms of which function is being called. And C++ won't allow for that. So let's go over an example. Up here, we're going to define two versions of a print function using overloading. So we'll say void print int a and double b is equal to two. So this is going to be a very basic print function that's going to output the value of a and output the value of b. But notice that we're using this default argument here. So if we don't supply the second argument here, b is going to default to two. We'll make another print function that's going to have a similar prototype. So we'll say void print int a, and this time car b is equal to the character d. And again, we'll output the value of a and b. So we'll say c out a followed by an end line and c out b followed by an end line. So here in this print function, it's also going to accept an int as the first argument. And the second argument this time is going to be a character, which is going to default to D. Now, if we call these functions with A and B value supplied, there's not going to be any ambiguity. Because if we supply a double value as a second argument, it means we're trying to call this print function. If we supply a character as a second argument, it means we're trying to call this print function. And we call this behavior of having two functions with the same name overloading. And we can overload a function name so long as there's some difference in terms of the number or types of parameters between the two functions. So here the difference is the second argument of this function is a double and the second argument of this function is a car. What if though we call the print function with only an integer argument, a single integer argument? In that case, there's going to be no way for C++ to determine which function we're trying to call, this version or this version. Let's try it out. So first we'll call print with 1 and 2.0. And we'll call print with 1 and the character C. And if we save this and run it, there won't be any issue here because there is no ambiguity. It's clear which function is being called. But as soon as we say print, and let's say two here, if we save this and run it, we get an error. And it says call to print is ambiguous. And again, that's just because it can't figure out which print function we're trying to call. And that's due to the fact that we've used these default arguments here. So that's just one thing we need to be aware of when we use default arguments. Hopefully this video has been a helpful introduction to default arguments in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.